Yep. They're, they're recording. <laughs> I think so. figured that out. Our, right. our recording. And yeah. Go ahead, um, So it might be. Uh, it might be beneficial to just go through and, and say this one belongs in like kind of really quickly like what focus group it focus area or focus area it goes in and then we also could just because that would, that would allow us to look at these questions that already exist right and maybe instead of redefining these questions without knowing which focus area they would be in we can just say okay does this question exist in this focus area already if it does then we can just put this metric under that question if that makes sense yeah okay I would uh... Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I would like to point out that in the in the current evolution format, questions are not actually attached to individual metrics. Questions are attached to groups of metrics. Right. Right. Which is which is by the way com different than all of the other work groups. So is there literally one metric underneath each question for the other work groups? Yes. I don't think that's okay. Because like I'm you don't think that's what... for risk, and I'm like, or at least I, I don't remember that being the case. Yeah, I got focus areas, so business risk question. Yeah, so yeah, here we have multiple metrics under questions in risk. Okay, which is uh, that's. But you know, I might be heavily influenced by all the is time this one, with Jesus at the beginning of evolution. But is um, this one published? Um, there looks like there are uh, open issue. Okay, so I don't know. If it's, page. I don't know if we have multiple published under a particular question. I don't think we necessarily. I'm not sure that we do. No, if you go to the chaos site, like what's actually published, it's yeah, metric to one question. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I guess what I'm saying is that the. The question was before you arrived, Matt. Do we? He, Kevin was saying that other working groups have one metric per question. I got it. Yeah. And I was remembering that risk. I thought we didn't, and we don't. And so, but I, I guess the other work groups, um, like value, is. I thought value had multiple. They may not have published multiple questions, or multiple metrics per question. But I think that. What's his name? Andy had defined them. At least I don't particularly. I don't think it's problematic to have a couple metrics that answer a question. No, no, I, yeah. And so what? What Carter was? Pro Go ahead, Carter. I'm yeah, just shut up now. No, no, you're good. Um, so what I was proposing, Matt, is um, you know, so like we have, you know, we have this really awesome list of all of the metrics that are implemented in Augur and Grimoire Lab, um, but it, there, there's a lot of them, um, which is great. But it would be pretty hard to go through, I think, each of each one of them individually and say, like, what exactly, which question does this answer? I think it would be, I mean, we could do it, but it would take a while. So what might be more effective, I think, would be to go through, figure out what focus area um, at the most, each metric lies in, and then look at the questions that are already um, in that focus area. If we think they fit under one of these questions, um, you know, if we think we the metric answers one of these questions, we can sort of, we can put that as the, as the question here. And if it doesn't, then we can make a new one. I think that, you know, the reusability um, of these questions might, might prove efficient. And it might be that none of them would fit, and that's, that's perfectly okay. Um, but I also think that just getting them into focus areas will help us kind focus. of focus. Yeah, so, focus them. Yeah, that's, there's no better way to put it. Um, you know, get them in the right, the right context, if that makes can sense. Can you kind of show me an example of how this would work? Um, yeah, so I don't know how to add a column on this. Um, but you know that yeah. I do. Okay. I, 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 I got the Google add column. Yeah, like or we could well, I don't know. A column for focus area if we wanted to do a column for focus area. So right click, yeah. No, yeah. He's, he's got That's it. All right. Insert column. Insert column right. I'll do that. Boom. Yeah. So you know this would be something yeah, like focus area. Focus area. I can type. Focus area. Um so we'll, make, we'll not do one of the released ones. So like issue comments mean, if I look at my focus areas, code development, community growth, or issue resolution. Um, issue comments, you know, that could, that could go under um, like how efficient is it dealing, which is under code development. Um, but, you know, I could also go in here and say, 
maybe it fits more under issue resolution. I did not mean to do that. Um, hang on. I actually opened a new window. My apologies. There we go. Um, so maybe it fits better under under issue resolution. Um, I don't know if you could say that. I, so I don't. Yeah. Issue resolution is interesting because there's no question. Right. Or I guess there. What is the number of open issues? Well, okay. Is this a so this is, I guess this, Kevin, is more like what you were talking about, right? Like under issue resolution, this looks more like the one question, one metric. Yes. So did, did this working group release metrics outside of the code focus area? I don't remember. Um, does it say? Because, oh. If we go to the chaos website, chaos.community. Oops. Chaos community. Uh, which one is metrics? Yeah. So it was code, only no, code we code. didn't. It was all code changes. I know. So we did release multiple. So oh no. Was, so we did do the one release question included one question per metric. Well, there's these top level questions, yeah. and then there's these individual metric questions. Yeah. Kevin, uh, is, well, is this, this the way to structure it then? This organization is uh, very different from the other working groups that I work with, and it's breaking the mental model. Maybe yeah. you want to think about reorganizing it. It's breaking my mental model um, a bit be because. Yeah, all the these risks. ones have this goal. What about the other? What about besides risk value? So the value, same thing, it's got the goal. Mm -hmm. um, is there a NC risk evolution, DNI? Yeah, I guess so. When we talk, I mean, I'm, it's interesting. I mean, Matt, what do you think? I mean, I've always, when we talk about goals, questions, and metrics with people, I, it's always in my head that there's multiple metrics that are likely to, an, to help answer a question. That That's the possible. questions are more um, higher level than they, than they are represented in what we released. It, it, when, I, when we talk about it, maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. But when okay. we're, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. He, he asked you, so you go ahead. I, uh, you, anyone can respond, I was asking that because. Because I'm here. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think, Kevin? I mean, this is kind of weird, but. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think when you're, when you're defining an individual metric, the question should focus on what that metric does. I think it's it's okay to to have a question that can that can add organization to multiple metrics, but if but if we're focusing on the definition of a of a single metric, I think we need to focus on the definition of that single metric without including uh, other metrics that may be in that same category. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that 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 metric yeah. categorization is maybe another step. Right. Like which what question does this metric best answer. Correct. I think that's right. And then the way that we think about multiple metrics, you know, maybe living in the same space is that kind of like looking at what you have on the screen right now, mm -hmm. these metrics answer that question and collectively they address the goal. Right. And so that's where you get the multiple metrics. But it's aimed at the goal, not at the question. So there's a an expectation of like a one to one alignment between questions and metrics. That's the grand. Yeah, that would be the most, at least, the most parallel way to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think for the sake of no right. consistency, it probably would be good to to follow and, the same format because then we don't have this. Yeah. No, I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah. So you'd have a focus area, say in this area, in this, in the evolution case, the focus area is code development, which is a fine focus area. Mm -hmm. and the goal is you'd have to perhaps write a fairly inclusive goal because it includes a lot of metrics here. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the goal, scroll up just a little bit. Yeah. See where it says goal, colon. Right. So that would just be if perhaps a, couple sentences, you'd have to write a goal broad enough. I mean, yeah, I do or, like high level question that because the high level question for code development 
that they have are how many changes are happening to source code. And they're, I like that high level. The, yep. The other option is to have break this into multiple focus areas. I was about to say that. Okay. Yeah. I knew you were, and I actually just wanted to say it before you said it so I could get credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> you get all the, the record show. <laughs> so, so you would have a focus area, which is, for example, code changes, a focus area that is reviews, a focus area that is issues, mm -hmm. a focus area that is, I mean, you could put those reviews accepted and reviews duration. Yeah. So what, so what's looking kind of weird to me is focus areas, issues are organized right now as a separate focus area, but they are released here under the focus area of code development. Like if you go to the repo for the working mm -hmm. group, we actually have like focus areas. Issue resolution is a focus area. Um, and so I don't know if it's maybe the, released or- uh, go, go back and click on the, the code development one. This one? Yeah. yeah. And scroll down. And... Do you want me to keep scrolling? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's so it is in here as well, right? So this this is one of those cases where metrics can exist within different focus areas because they they can answer different questions based on the the context, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can help answer different questions. So this is going to be more and more common the more metrics we release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one metric can live in a variety of different working groups. Totally fine. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's your point, Kevin. Yeah, and, and focus areas. Yeah. One metric can live in different focus areas or different work groups, yeah, working groups. So maybe the first task is to, I actually kind of like the idea of multiple focus areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other people think uh, on the existing set. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree, Matt. What uh, do you think, Kevin or Georg? Holy support. Okay. Yeah, I think the more focus areas you have, the more focused each one of them can be. Yeah, no, I agree. And actually that's been the model of the other. So maybe the first step would be to think about in the prior release, mm -hmm. what um, the focus areas are that appropriately accommodate these, whatever, however many it is, and metrics and questions. Can you say that again? What focus areas accommodate? These 10 questions and metrics from release one. Yeah, release. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm typing on an unfamiliar keyboard. <laughs> um, the previously released metrics. Yeah. Yes. I should, so I should theoretically be better at it, but I should use your computer and write notes. So, you know, from a high level, if you if you're in that document, there appears to be one focus area around code changes, one focus area around reviews, and one focus area around issues. In this one? That's so what's in there right now. Where you were typing. Oh, sorry. Code, re yep, code changes, reviews, and whoever typed that, thank you. Yeah, those I did. Uh, okay. But I did it as Carter run each other's computers because yeah. I have electricity so. for mine and so I'm powering the video. Well, then if those are the focus areas, like what is the goal for code changes? What is the goal for reviews? And what is the goal for issues? And those names might change a little bit. Mm -hmm. So under a focus area, there'd be like... Then you have a goal. You just have one defined goal for code changes, whatever that might be. One goal for reviews and one goal for issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's basically a question metric like that. Yep, you got it. And those question metrics hit that goal. Right. Yep. Then that could be part of the release too. Mm -hmm. Or the release that occurs and Right. So that shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. You have right. the metrics are already defined. The hardest, the newest part of that was probably coming up with the sentence that is the goal. Mm -hmm. Which, so you'd have to write like three sentences. Right. And they, they might already be in the repository somewhere. 
Mm -hmm. They probably are. Yep. Uh, so, is is this working group really about like organizing a bunch of things that exist? Well, I, I think so. So I, I mean, I think it can be about defining new metrics too. But I think there's been a push in the other working groups that is basically saying, "Hey, listen, we have a lot of these things already deployed, right? So we're." we're doing ourselves a bit of a disservice if we don't take a little bit of time and define those things that are deployed. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And so it's not just this working group, I think it's all working groups mm -hmm. that are dealing with that issue. Right. Additionally, oh, sorry. I uh, just ask how you would, how would you advise Carter to walk this group through what it needs to go to do i mean should we start with i'm going back and forth between do we do we go through that long list or do we just pick a focus area and flesh it out well at the, high, at the highest level what is uh well i'll respond to that kevin did you have a comment too i was just gonna i was just gonna make a comment that was kind of related to yours uh, and that's that uh there's there's years of research behind the auger metrics that have been deployed, uh, and we're we're getting to years of research behind, or I'm sorry, the the Grimoire Lab mm -hmm. metrics right. that have been deployed, and we're getting to years of research behind the auger metrics. So, yeah, to me, it makes sense. Three. It makes sense to to grab those, yes. put them together. Uh, so probably oh, using yeah. the yeah. using the table that you had started with. I think that that probably mm -hmm. is the best place to start. Just like yeah. see yeah. what's been done and. Uh, combine them together. So if I, um, if I look at the, the released metrics, right? So we have code changes reviews, which are pull requests and issues. So from an evolution perspective, what, what is another thing that we might care about when trying to understand the evolution of a, of a project? You know, be, besides pull requests, besides looking at code changes, beside besides looking at issues, Are there. And does the repository help us determine that? You know, like what's been written in the repo at the moment? Can you click on the repo? Um, oh, in this one. Yeah, just you know. So go back one. Go to that focus area. Yeah. So we have community growth. Like, let's take a look at what's inside of there. So contributors. So mm -hmm. what I would see here is is like a focus area about contributors, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah, and I, I actually was going to suggest that if we didn't have it already, but it looks like we already do. So maybe the next focus area is around contributors, and mm -hmm. the goal is to understand, you know, engagement with whatever contributors, <laughs> however right. you're, you know, yeah. the way that I just said it. Right. And that could include, you know, identifying new contributing organizations, identifying new contributing people. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I mean, I think this goal that as it exists already, it probably could use some tweaking, but I think this is a pretty good goal that we would try to answer with contributor metrics. We want to know about the size um, and then how that size is changing relative to, to what's happening. Yeah, you just so, have to localize it a little bit with contributors. Right. Um, I mean, I think this would be a. So go back. Home. So contributors is one, right? Mm -hmm. So um, click on issue resolution. Is there anything in there? Those are all issue things. Go back. What about code development? So I think this is where we have the the changes, reviews, and then also some more of the issue metrics. Yeah. So and like, some more reviews. You could here. make some of those focus areas, I think, if I'm following the logic here. But I think they are already, I mean, I think they're already, yeah, they will be focus areas based on the release in version one. Because mm -hmm. a lot of these are captured. Scroll down a little bit. Efficiency, quality, code review, testing. Is anybody else seeing any? focus area that kind of jumps out at them that isn't one that would be defined from version one or community. OK. 
Kevin or Georg? So just so I'm, I make sure I'm, I'm following. So we would have the, the changes, the code changes, um, issues, reviews, contributors, and maybe that's it at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think those would be, I think those four would be a pretty comprehensive set for, for a next release and just to start focusing. I'm yeah. sure as we, as we iterate on metrics and as we, you know, whenever we get to, to this, this list, we probably would be able to come up with a couple more, but I think that those four issues, so changes, reviews, issues, and contributors. Uh, contributors yeah. I, I think that covers a, a pretty big ground and there's a lot of really interesting uh, questions you can ask about those things. And and like, of course, course three are, for all intents and purposes, I mean, they're already kind of worked out. Yeah. Well, in those first three, really, the question would be, are there any additional metrics that we would want to include? And I think if I if we go back to that spreadsheet, I bet you we find that a lot of those metrics, those very those are very focused metrics, each of them. Mm -hmm. And I suspect many of them fall within one of these four categories. Mm -hmm. Like this would probably be ranking of repository summary returns current count of watchers stars forks like. Yeah, and I think too, I mean, part of, if I think about the working groups, so if I think of like say or risk or any of them, I don't think the goal is to always release new focus areas. I don't, Yeah. we're not trying to achieve like four focus areas this really. Right, no, yeah. 20, I don't think that's the goal ever. So yeah. even just having four is kind of a, a way to bound things at that highest level that might be sufficient. Yeah, I'm I'm completely in agree with that. I think that's good. Yeah. I think that's a great path to right back. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it would be nice if we could continue to work on the uh, focus areas and metrics that have uh, already been released as well. Mm -hmm. uh, see, it, from from gum, coming to some of these meetings, it kind of seems like uh, everyone's really ready to to go and find new focus areas and find new metrics and the uh it kind of feels like people think these metrics that have already been defined and published are just done mm -hmm. i i completely agree kevin you know especially as we release them and deploy them and, and we get feedback on them we should continue to iterate on iterate on them i completely agree so maybe that's part of before our next release we make a specific point to go back and say what worked about the metrics from release one, what didn't work about them, and how can we fix those? Is that kind of something that you would like? Is that like more what you were thinking? Yeah, I think that would be incredibly helpful. Okay. Let me make sure I know that. Because um, otherwise I'm going to forget. So review metrics from previous mm -hmm. releases before every new one. Um, so, okay, so it's only 10.30. Um, so we've got the four, well, not the four. We have four, uh, I think, focus areas that we think would be pretty complete. Um, so, uh, we, I mean, we could sit here and, and actually, you know what, I could probably just do that myself. Just go through and, and break these out and um, into their, um, so the way we've been doing it, working with yeah. these is forking it. And right, doing a pull request. request. Um, yeah, that probably wouldn't take me terribly long. Um, but I could go through, break these out into the focus areas, um, and then add, you know, update this page accordingly. And then um, I could do that by the next meeting, and then we could review those. Is there any point? point? Or, we could, or we could sit here, or we, it might be helpful to write the goal for each of these focus areas now without thinking about specific metrics Let's that might color the view of the goal, if that makes sense. Let's do that. Okay. Um, so let's look at what we already have for code changes. So, or sorry, code development. Okay, so the question, let's make sure, okay, yeah. So it looks like the, the, so the two code metrics, or code, the two changes metrics that we released, um, code changes and code changes lines, uh, the question that they are trying to answer is how many changes are happening to the source code during a certain time period. 
And the, I think the, one of the two goals of this focus area, at least in the previously released version, was activity. Um, I don't really think it would fall under efficiency. So I think kind of maybe starting from, from this two, these two bases. Can I, can I interrupt something real quick? Oh, yeah, of course. Go right ahead. I think the, the way that these are categorized, I think the, the focus area, like code development is kind of a bucket that captures everything. Mm -hmm. But I think the focus area is actually activity. Uh, and then. So oh, right now we have the focus area at code changes. Right, if, if you go back to the, oh no, no, the code changes is the metric. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, so. Code changes is the metric. They're both about code changes, though. Mm -hmm. So maybe we think of, yeah. A I name. believe code changes is also the name of the focus area. Uh, yeah. It's code development. Uh, no, code development is the name oh. of the yeah. focus oh. area. If you go back to the repo real quick. Mm -hmm. So in, in code uh, development, you have goal activity. Mm -hmm. You have goal uh, kind of go down. I mean, oh, yeah, goal efficiency. Sorry, you, you were right there. Goal efficiency and then goal quality. Right. Uh, aren't those individual goals, isn't that the focus area? And code development is just kind of a bucket that holds those focus well, areas? Done for the first release. Whoever just put code development yeah. as the um, focus area name, who typed that? I did. That was Sean typing as Carter. Sorry to confuse you. <laughs> oh, I can't. I oh, Okay. Um, I mean, it's not terrible to leave the focus area of code development. Yeah, there's, I, I don't have any issue with the, uh, like the classification. It's just, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't want to change the names of things if we don't have to, just because people will start hopefully using the metrics. And if we start changing the names of everything, I think that makes it harder to get uptake. I, I yeah. do think it's important to realize though, that when you're, when you're in here looking at code development, I think the, the focus area that you're actually looking at is activity or efficiency or quality as code development itself is, is a really big abstract my bucket. Problem, my problem with that though is so is, so is efficiency, so yeah. is activity. So like if I think about DNI, they have like one of their focus areas is DNI, like it's events. And I get yeah. it. Like that makes a ton of sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like here, the yeah. diversity. Yeah. Right. So, it's leadership. Mm -hmm. So I think if our focus, if the focus areas are activity, it's too broad. Yeah, because then I, I think the other question would be, so activity is something like, you know, under activity we have issues. Um, so would these go under the activity? Like would we get rid of the four that we, we just talked about? The, uh, code development reviews issues contributors and then have activity efficiency and quality be the three focus groups and then that's where we put these metrics or should we or is it more pertinent to have the focus group the focus area be these three changes reviews issues and then also contributors and then define them them under so i see where kevin is coming from because mm -hmm. when we write a focus area we always have a goal and because we have a goal activity, and when you go up at the top, it actually, there's a description of the goal. Mm -hmm. So I can see how that looks and feels like a focus area. And maybe the name is code development activity or activity in code development. And that is a focus area. And we don't even have to change the structure. We just, instead of having focus area code development, we have three code development fo focus areas with activity, efficiency, and quality each. Mm -hmm. And I think that aligns what we have now, and it is in line with what we do everywhere else. Yeah, I think that requires the, the least change to what we've got in place. Mm -hmm. It's just a reorganization. So code develop, so reviews become code development. Activity. Mm, what are development reviews? Well, they're they're both under. We have reviews under efficiency and under activity. Right. So because one, we yeah. look at code reviews differently depending on what the goal is. 
So, yeah. So, and, and we keep, there's some, um, semantically keep in mind this working group defined real reviews as what a pull request basically is. So they aren't actually, um, like they're, they're pull requests in GitHub language, but they're called something else in GitLab, which is merge requests, merge requests, merge requests right? Mm -hmm. So this is a, which can be confused because code reviews are a thing in both tools now, mm -hmm. but that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, that was a, at least that's not how the group previously defined it. Mm -hmm. There was discussion and reviews was that agreed on as the umbrella term for that thing. Mm -hmm. Makes sense because we also have tools like Garrett. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they call it something else. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, well, just, I, I'm just trying to be the history of the group's decision to call these things reviews. And so code reviews um, are probably uh, a separate thing. Like, is the code reviewed before a pull request is accepted? So the way that I see this is a review is an activity, a data point. Right. And that in itself is not the metric. It's what we use to develop the metric. Well, I think whether or not a repository performs code reviews, like, so our repositories, for example, we conditionally accept changes to people have to review any proposed change. Mm -hmm. I think that's a different thing than a pull request review mm -hmm. is all I'm saying. Although I guess if you think about it, no, it's not because we're requiring it on the pull request. Right. Yeah. Anytime we want to make a, a we want to merge into master yeah. two people that are uh, authorized maintainers that are right. not also not the person who wrote it. Yeah. Have to, have to so that is a, it. So, I mean, it is a review. It is. At least, I guess, I guess for us. Can I, can I ask us to, I think the first thing that we need to do is define the focus areas. I agree. I agree. So before we go talking about yeah. these kind of lower level details as to how things might be related, mm -hmm. like what, so we have this list right here. Oops, sorry. Okay, so at the moment, we have one giant bucket focus area called code development. Mm -hmm. And there appears to be an argument to have, to account for activity, um, efficiency and, and quality. quality are the two that are defined currently. Okay, so quality. So, and then. Although that doesn't map to issues, I don't. I think it's. Oh, they have issues under it. You're right. Yeah, for, okay. Like the alternative name for it. Am I yeah. saying? So, okay. irrespective of how things are currently set up in the GitHub repository, can we just, like, we, we're not bound by that repository. Yeah. Right? No. It is I'm, how things are at the moment. Yeah, but I think it's a point of perhaps, obviously, it's a point of confusion. Mm -hmm. So if we were to think about evolution as a working group, what are the focus areas that people would care to understand to understand the evolution of a project? So that's, that's my question. And I think we're getting a little hung up on... So I see... So like if I'm thinking of code development, like I don't know if we need to keep efficiency and quality as focus areas. I would argue uh, that we do. We do. We do. do. Okay. So my, my thinking is if I'm concerned about the evolution of a working group or of a repository, right? And let's say I'm just like, I want to know, like from an activity standpoint, is it active? What's happening? Um, are, is there a lot of things happening? But it's a different if it's, it's a different story if I see a lot of things happening, but maybe the things that are happening are not very efficient. Maybe a lot of things are happening because they're not efficient and they have to keep doing things that detract from the efficiency. I want to know that they're doing a lot and that also the things they're doing are being effective, if that makes sense. And then I guess to follow through the same train of thought, not only are they efficient, like maybe they're, I want to know not only are they efficient, but what is they're doing actually of good quality? Maybe it's efficient because they're going fast and being sloppy. But what you know is the focus area in this, these scenarios that you're talking about? So to me, uh, it, 
and the more I think about it, the more I the more I agree with Kevin that having that activity efficiency quality being the focus areas of almost kind of maybe building on one another, but like I think viewing them all together, viewing a metric in the context of that's not the right term I want to use. Okay, so like, a focus area, what a, fo a focus area I assume has multiple goals typically, right? No, no. It should have one, one goal. It that does in this repository. I, I've spent too much time in this working group. I think this is normal. <laughs> yeah. So uh, is that is the code development activity, code development efficiency, and code development quality? Does that hit what you're talking about? Me? Were you asking me? Yep, Kevin. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, uh, I actually think that would uh, that would resolve the issue that I was seeing, and I think it brings it uh, closer to the other working groups as well. What about you, Georg? Yes, it does. Okay. And I, I think we can compose how you would use these different goals, or how you would view the different goals and focus areas at a higher level to make some of those larger questions more apparent. Like maybe across, maybe so, we don't define them, the, the, the broad questions within focus areas, but sort of outside of them, if that makes sense. So I mean, like, essentially all of the things that are presently goals are lifted up to be focus areas, I think, because there's like- At the moment we have three focus areas that we're proposing, code development activity, irrespective of how they're, where they're originating from or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Code development activity, code development efficiency, and code development quality. There's, okay, so, and we have this contributor down there as well that has kind of, it, we don't have to address that one, I don't think, mm -hmm. at the moment. So with respect to code development activity, what is the goal of that, what's the goal in this focus area? I copied basically what was for, for activity, I copied what we have presently as the description of the goal for- Can we all take a look at that really quickly? That was the, that was a high level goal for code development. It wasn't for code development activity. Do you think. think this is an appropriate goal for code development activity? Learn about activity involved in changing or adding code, measurement of type chains associated with the repository. Of the so does the second min sentence mean we view a, ch a certain type of change as so I think specific that, to a repository well I think I think the current definition as it stands is encompasses the things that we've broken out into separate focus areas so we probably need to change the description of the goal so maybe because the, efficiency like the efficiency also talks about adding and removing code from a code base so this is really about Measuring the volume of changes. Yeah, I mean, this one of the level of it, yeah. Are we, if, we, if I want to know how active it is, I want to know how many changes, yeah. if, it, if it's a lot or a little, um, are happening. Okay, so what do people think of this goal at the moment with respect to code development activity? I, I'm proposing to add something like level up or quantity. It's about how much activity is going on. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I would agree. It's, it's this, yeah, I completely agree, Georg. It's about the, just how much. Okay. Kevin mm -hmm. or Manrique? Hello, Manrique. Is Any? it just how much or is it also the type? I think, actually, I think. The, what, what do you mean by type? So there's, you can, there's, Adding lines, removing lines. Um, essentially, some code evolves where you're just changing existing programs or adapting them or refactoring them, but the fundamentals don't change. So it's a slow evolving project. There's not a lot of new um, code files being added. Um, okay. We're just editing existing ones. When a project is being created or evolving quickly, you'll often see more new files created, more lines added. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, those are different. I think in many of the metrics, we measure those different types of things. 
So if I want so to this activity, I think those are the things I'm, I think about all of those things. Mm -hmm. So this is the type and frequency of activity? That, that makes sense to me. I think so. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Learn about the level of different activities involved in developing code. The type and frequency of activities. That's fine. That looks good to me. There's all this editing going on at once. Um, I like, I personally, I like that goal a lot for activity. It has to be fairly encompassing, right? Mm -hmm. We're not specific yet. Not yet. All right. So let's, for the time being, let's, I'm going to, somebody's accepting those changes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> let's move down to code development efficiency. Okay. As a goal. Mm. As a focus area. Well, the goal associated with code. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if I think about what are I mean, effective is a good general word because it covers whether or not, I mean, basically, if new code changes, quote unquote, effectively merged, then they're accepting a lot. If it's not effectively merged, then they're it not does. accepting a lot. So effective is a general word. Mm -hmm. Should we just say efficiently? Efficiently? Yeah, effective and efficiency are two different things. Just to keep it parallel with one another. Um, do we want to keep it at how officially new code is merged into the code base? Because I might have a question about like how efficient are my internal developers that are just pushing code to a branch regularly? Not necessarily, you know, is that, or is that code being merged into the code base? You know what I mean? How efficiently are activities? I think we are not just looking at merging code, but we're also looking at issue duration, issue backlog. So there are activities around the code development. Mm -hmm. Not just the, on sure. the code itself. Okay, so then this becomes okay. So then this would contain both issues and pull request metric things. Right. Like how long do you, yeah, like how long do issues stay open? Sure. The technical definition of efficiency uh -huh. is the ratio of the useful work performed by a machine. We're in a process to the total energy expended or heat taken in. Right. <laughs> so the, the ratio of useful work might be something we could uh, take. I mean, efficiency has to be a ratio of something. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think, he, I think each of the metrics is going to be where what that ratio is is defined. But I'm cool leaving. I think putting the word ratio into efficiency does create some clarity that's not there right now. I agree. The, the, the useful work part is, a, is a little not, I don't have a problem with it, but it is kind of like, I don't want how do you define, how do you define useful in the context of like, how can you say that the work, you know what I'm saying? Like if they don't merge my pull request, it doesn't feel useful, but I think, I think this ratio language is more clear. I completely agree. So, but uh, the current way the goal is written right now, if efficient efficiency inherently contains ratios, then I I don't know that the goal. I, I, I I'll just say I think this one is worded well as it is right now. Learning how efficiently efficiently activities around code development get resolved. Okay, this is I, a. I'm not against keeping that definition. I'm not either. Um, efficiency in this case, as you had point, as Kevin had pointed out, and you were talking that it, it contains a ratio component to it. Mm -hmm. and perhaps that's something that we explicate in the metrics more mm -hmm. than all. Yeah, can, can I say something I, about that ratio? Yeah. Yeah, something that would be considered saying that ratio between useful work and the energy need. I see in it as the useful work would be the code merge, I mean the code accepted or the code that is added to the base code between or the ratio with the amount of 
pull requests or issues or whatever they are opening, for example. So basically the energy discussing that and getting those accepted is that efficient. So I mean, projects that are not active at all is basically you can keep adding issues and pull requests and nobody is accepting them. So basically there's a lot of activity because there are a lot of issues and pull requests and the efficiency is close to zero because mm -hmm. Does this memory yeah. control currently accommodate that? Because I think it's that last part, the get resolved part, yeah. indicates that there's some closure to the activity. I'm guessing that's what you were writing, Georg, when you wrote that. That there's some activity, whether it's an issue or a pull request, and there's some resolution of that, whether it's closed yeah. without merging, whether it's merged, whether it's closed without comment. There is a resolution. Yeah, this is how I see it. Okay. Okay. And, you know, well, well, what about activities that don't necessarily have, well, I guess the activities we've designed, defined so far, most of them have resolutions, but things like code changes, like what's, what's, what, what does resolution like for in the, in the context of like a code change or like how many commits, you know what I'm saying? The, my guess is that this development efficiency focus area is going to focus on issues and pull requests or issues and reviews. Okay. Yeah. It's so. really going to just revolve around those two. Okay. Yeah. I'm f yeah, I'm fine with that. It just was something I was curious about. Okay. So what about the last one? Code development process quality. This one has the word process in it, but. Mm -hmm. I don't think the word process was there before. I added it and I accepted my change when I saw changes. I, I mean, should we then add process to the other two? No. So what was your thought in adding that, Georg? When we talk about quality of code, that's risk metric. But when we talk about the quality of the process, then we are talking about the evolution. OK. That's Yeah, that's a good point. So do you have thoughts? I'm reaching out perhaps a little bit far, but do you have thoughts on what metrics might? I know that I'm not supposed to ask that question at the moment because we're just try trying to build the goal. Mm -hmm. Like I think actually some of the test coverage metrics that the risk working group defined could be cross-listed with evolution, which Kevin alluded to earlier as a, a likely way that the project is going to evolve overall. Like I don't know what that there needs to be a distinction between code development quality um, by a working group. That seems, if we're gonna go to a matrix kind of set of metrics, that feels a bit artificial. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it would include, because I think test coverage is perfectly valid as an evolution metric too. Um, like I wouldn't wanna say, oh, notice this other working group has got it, so we won't. Like, I mean, I think we're gonna have to deal with this cross-listing thing this one seems harder to me because mm -hmm. we're talking about like process is always hard. So is this, um, is this about people being nice? Is this about bots assisting in the process? Is this about, I mean, pro I mean, when I, when I teach software engineering, I mean, quality is measured in two ways. One is the quality of the process of development, right? So if you have a good process that tends to lead to good code and we know these things, and the other is static measures of code quality. Okay. Test coverage, things like that. So um, if you want to cover quality as a whole, you take the word process out. Okay. Um, and if you want to distinguish between test things like test coverage, sort of static code analysis, and software development process, then you would leave it in. So, I mean, from this perspective, would it been, I see somebody had put in, for example, testing, code review, would this be things like tagging or whatever? Like tagging your release? Or tagging issues, yeah, or tagging release. I think we start to get, we start to get metrics like uh, time to response in there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like maybe that's um, um, probably one of the reasons I would re sort of vote to reject process is because like test coverage 
or testing is not really a process measure. I mean, the existence of testing it indicates a good process, but this is a measure of the quality of the process. So, yeah, I mean, it's a quality measure, less of a process measure. I that's yeah, I think so. I think it is just flat quality. No, no, no. But the the point being that um, if we're trying to measure the quality of a process. Mm -hmm. in open source, what are the things that we can like hold on to? Like how do we, how do we know that it's of good quality? Is that what you're asking? How do we know that the process is good quality? So I think Georg's point with code quality versus code process quality is code quality. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Georg, but code quality is about the code base itself. Right. And code process quality is about the quality of the process and getting that work done. Mm -hmm. And I think he's trying to highlight the latter of the two. Yeah. One, one thing we can put in here as a metric is the um, CII best practices badge, because they have a lot of process quality measures and things like requires a review. It's a Boolean value, but it's something we can do. Or having... Um, like having issue templates. Having issue templates. I it's a think Boolean it's value, but it's still a good measure to have. I mean, yeah, CII badging is used in risk as well. So, I mean, we already have this, at least it's not articulated yet, but it's on the roadmap to articulate for risk, the work, risk working group. Yeah, and it's in the it's in auger. So it's a level of maturity of yeah. the process. Yep, no, I agree. So I actually then when I start looking at this list, if I keep the focus area the name that it currently is, if if there's solid testing, if code reviews are being done, if the tagging of issues is occurring, perhaps tagging of releases and time to response and CII badging. Like if all of these are zero, I would say the process quality is probably pretty poor. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm just thinking like counting the number of best practices apply in the repository. That's basically what CII badging does. Mm -hmm. It's like a checklist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's for CI, yeah. What were you thinking also, Manrique? No, I was just curious about the how this is has been written and uh, I am aligned with your mindset, Matt, about this. This is more about measuring the quality of the process. So basically, is the process designed to accomplish what his one has been designed for? Mm -hmm. So basically we are talking about code development, is is code being developed? I, I don't mind about the quality of the code itself. I am I'm I'm curious about okay, the process is providing code or is providing solves uh, solutions to the issues or is uh, facilitating pull, re pull request reviews and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't know if that's counting the number of best practices or not. I, I don't know how to, to measure that, basically. So, it, um, so, when I think about CII badging, I know we only have a minute, but it covers a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want that, I can pull it up. Um, well, oh. maybe it's to think about it. I'm going to have to go here on the hour. Yeah. Um, but I, I like, I like this list at least out of the gate. Mm -hmm. I think CII badging might cover some of these things. I think is my, my point. Mm -hmm. So like CII badging might cover code review. I don't know if that's a question they ask. Like it might be redundant to take a look at a metric of code review and then have a metric of CII badging when? I actually, I think that is one of the things that they look at okay. if there, if there's a code review process in place and. Uh, okay. Mm. So we might do, have to do a little digging because I think CII badging covers a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I know it does and mm -hmm. no need to be redundant. Mm -hmm. Okay. I gotta go. Yep. Thank you, right. Matt. Thanks everyone. The meeting. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yep.
Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. I'm sorry for being late. No worries. Yeah. Bye. Uh, Bye. Share and then delete. Yeah.